Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Every year, Nigeria generates millions of waste tires from vehicles of all kinds, cars, buses, and motorcycles. Recognizing both the environmental hazard and the economic opportunity, Nigerian entrepreneurs and recycling companies have turned to innovative ways of giving new life to old tires. What we have tried to do is to see how we can contribute to preserving the environment. Because yearly, millions and millions of these tires are burnt. So what we try to do is to withdraw those tires. The more we buy, the lesser tires that we burnt, and the lesser impact, um, the lesser effect it will have on the environment. Okay, my name is Olu Shebu uh, Babalola. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Free Recycle Limited. Once the company has the tires ready, it begins its process by removing the inner steel wires. Without those wires, the tire is now pure rubber, which is easier to process in the shredding machine, where it is chopped into several pieces. Specialized machines cut the bulky tires into smaller chips. These chips are then fed into powerful grinders, which reduce them further into chrome rubber. During the grinding process, the conveyor system has several sieves that are used to select pieces that require further processing. The workers are positioned alongside every step of the process to ensure its quality. A machine is used to sort the rubber granules based on their sizes, from 3 by 32 inches to 3 by 16 inches. Magnets are also used to ensure that there are no steel pieces mixed with the rubber. One of the most innovative applications in Nigeria is the manufacture of rubber bricks. Manufacturers mold strong, durable bricks that are ideal for paving sidewalks, driveways, and playgrounds. By mixing crumb rubber with binding agents such as cement or polyurethane resin, this mixture increases the strengths of the bricks and also gives them more durability for the tropical climate of Nigeria. Colored rubber particles are also added to increase the aesthetics of the product. Once the mixture is prepared, the workers are in charge of pouring it into the characteristic H-shaped molds. Compaction is a necessary and important step as it removes any air inside and ensures that the particles are bonded. This is why further compression is applied with pressing machines that maintain constant pressure. All the products made from the rubber particles are cured in an oven for at least eight hours to achieve their maximum durability. The advantage of this over other alternatives is the safety. If you fall on this, you get back up. That's one. Two, the shelf life. This product will last, it lasts very, very long, extremely long. So that's, that's um, those are the two major uh, benefits of that. These rubber bricks have several advantages over conventional concrete. They're lighter, shock absorbent, and resistant to cracking. In flood-prone areas, they also provide better drainage, making them an eco-friendly solution for urban infrastructure. Similar steps are followed by products like rubber mats, 
with the use of extra machinery such as mechanical rollers. Another popular use of recycled rubber is in the production of slippers. Known locally as palm slippers, these sandals are a staple of everyday life across Nigeria. Beyond the practical products, tire recycling in Nigeria plays a critical role in environmental management. Owing to the lack of domestic vehicle production, Nigeria is highly dependent on imports to meet its domestic demand. The country imports a staggering 720,000 vehicles every year. This massive influx not only meets the growing demand for cars, but also offers lucrative profit margins. The numbers speak for themselves. Nigeria's used vehicle imports skyrocketed in value, jumping from 206.4 million in 2022 to 674.7 million in 2023, marking an increase of 226.46% in just one year. Every year, Nigeria imports a diverse range of used cars from iconic brands like Toyota, Honda, and BMW. 60% or, let me say, 70% of uh, consignment coming into this country are actually coming from the U.S. Then uh, some are actually coming from Europe. We also have the destination of, in, uh, you know, uh, Emirates country like Dubai and all that. So. So uh, coming down to this place, after the shipment, I think once your consignment has been loaded, it will take up to, sometimes it takes 20 working days, it takes, you know, 15, it depends. However, the real work begins once these broken cars arrive at the importer's garage after months of sea travel. The unloading process is anything but simple. The initial steps include setting up a steel ramp and ensuring everything is ready to roll the cars out of the container. The unloaders then move the cars out carefully almost like a well-rehearsed choreography. Despite the lack of safety gear, the unloaders take extra precautions, constantly warning each other of potential dangers. They avoid standing directly in front of or below the cars to minimize the risk of injury. Taking precautions is a necessity in this procedure, not only because it ensures the safety of the personnel involved, but also due to the fact that any injury or accident would halt the entire process, at least for some time. First of all, you have to do some exam uh, undergo examination process. So after that, the, all the, all, uh, the agencies, we have NDLA, we have SSS, we have uh, quarantine, we have anti-bomb, you know, series of them, you know. After, they must have uh, gone through their normal examination process and they're okay with whatever you are carrying, in, you know, inside your container, then they will not proceed to the customs office. Except if there's any issues, that is when the other agencies will get hold of the, of the container. So, but if there is no other issues, then you are good to go to proceed to the custom uh, releasing section. Some of these unloaders are also mechanics tasked with performing quick fixes on the vehicles 
before they are towed to the garage or warehouse. Their jobs include checking the windscreen wipers, replacing batteries, inflating tires, and stripping useful parts from the cars. These mechanics inspect the basic operations of the car, such as ignition, accelerator, and brakes, and remove any parts that are prone to damage during transportation to the warehouse. Nigeria has earned its title as Africa's automotive hub, but there's a catch. The ratio of used car to new car sales is 75-25. In fact, more than 60% of cars on Nigerian roads are over 12 years old, which creates a constant and growing demand for spare parts. This need has fueled the country's auto spare parts sector, which produces an estimated annual revenue ranging from $500 million to $900 million. With the right support, this sector possesses the latent power to become a cornerstone of the country's economic growth. One important method of waste management and recycling used around the world is incineration. This process involves burning solid waste at extremely high temperatures and specialized furnaces. In addition to reducing waste, many plants convert the heat from incineration into electricity or steam, turning garbage into a valuable source of energy. Today, we take you inside one of Europe's most advanced waste-to-energy facilities, the SYSAV plant in Malmo, Sweden. This massive operation is not only a cornerstone of the region's waste management strategy, but also a vital producer of electricity and heat for the surrounding communities. At CSAV, which is a company owned by 40 municipalities, our mission is to treat uh, waste as sustainably as possible. Each year, SYSAV processes around 400,000 tons of municipal and industrial waste. Trucks arrive daily, unloading everything from household refuse to bulky industrial discards. From the moment the waste enters the facility, the operation is carefully managed. At dedicated sites across the region, recyclables, hazardous waste, and organic material are separated. Only the non-recyclable fraction makes its way to the incarceration lines. Inside the plant, Towering shredders and feeding systems prepare the waste for combustion. SYSAV operates multiple incineration lines, including two of the most modern in Europe, capable of handling up to 29 tons of waste per hour. At temperatures exceeding 900 degrees Celsius, the waste is burned on advanced reverse-acting grates. This process drastically reduces its volume while unlocking enormous amounts of thermal energy. We get a temperature of 1,000 degrees Celsius. The smoke and the heat travels up into the boiler where we then take in water to the dome. We get a steam with a pressure of 40 bar and that we will take into the turbine driving the generator and we will produce our electricity. The steam spins turbines that generate electricity, enough to power roughly 17,000 households each year. From household trash to valuable energy, SYSAV has turned waste management into a model of sustainability. 
By combining recycling, incineration, and advanced recovery technologies, the plant ensures that nothing is wasted, and every fraction of material is put to use. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.